The feds just announced a new rule on what's not allowed to come out of your kitchen tap. You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. The new water standards are designed to keep harmful chemicals out of your body. Macy Eglin has the story. All across New York State, millions of people will be impacted by this one EPA ruling. Adrian Esposito calling it the greatest public health victory in a generation. The EPA has just issued its first limit on PFOS and PFOS in drinking water. Just four parts per trillion will be allowed. A PFOS are man-made chemicals that do not break down in nature. They build up in our bodies and can create health problems. The EPA has said that over prolonged exposure over many years, you know, depending on the level, uh, can have an anything from reproductive issues to developmental delays to increased risk of some kinds of cancer. In January of 2020, New York State implemented a new drinking water standard of PFOS levels at 10 parts per trillion. Dozens of water districts on Long Island will need to adhere to these new rules. And for many, it will force changes, which could cost you, the consumer. As these levels get tighter and they, they increase the pool of things that we have to look for and treat for, you know, those costs, those costs exist. And so I think you know, just managing expectations, I would expect consumers to 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 see some increase in costs. It will all depend on where you live. Neary says many suppliers are working proactively to secure the necessary equipment to treat the water. The Suffolk County Water Authority released a statement saying in part, quote, the Water Authority has been preparing for this and we are well on our way to meeting all regulatory requirements within the time frame laid out by EPA. This ruling is especially sensitive for Long Island and other communities that rely on aquifers. Because uh, unfortunately, all the activity on the surface seeps down underground. Esposito estimates this will impact around 1 million Long Islanders, including those who use private wells, who will now have access to federal funding for treatment options. I think anything that can help to increase longevity and keep Long Islanders happy and healthy, I'm all for that. Water districts will have five years to comply. Esposito says the next step is targeting these chemicals at the source. Consumers are already paying with our health. The least the manufacturers can do is pay with their wallet. New York lawmakers are considering action that bans the use of forever chemicals, and local water districts are in court fighting to see who should pay to remove them. Reporting for Newsday TV, I'm Macy Egland. Now to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. An attorney has been charged with stealing more than 700 grand through real estate transactions. Prosecutors say Daniel Boldy tricked victims he worked with and allegedly stole proceeds of their property sales. The 49-year-old was arraigned on two counts of grand larceny. He's due back in court on April 25th. Now, the Nassau County DA is asking anyone who thinks they have been victimized to call 516-571-3505. And only in Newsday, prosecutors say a local pastor is facing more child sex charges. Jose Saiz Jr. pleaded not guilty today to a 12-count indictment. His attorney says Saiz is being housed in a nursing facility. The 29-year-old was a pastor at the church in Brentwood. And multiple people were shot at an Eid event in Philadelphia. Police say they heard about 30 gunshots. The Philadelphia Police Commissioner says two groups started shooting at each other and people began to run away. Four men and a woman were taken into custody. Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman released a statement saying, in part, I have ordered increased patrols around Moss throughout the county to protect our residents. And thousands of Long Islanders gathered for the end of Ramadan. Steve Langford was in Uniondale for the festivities. Allahu Akbar. Mid-morning at Mitchell Field in Uniondale, an overflow crowd of hundreds to celebrate the end of Ramadan. Today is a day of Eid, a day of celebration, a day of mercy, a day of forgiveness, and a day that our prayers get accepted. It's the second Eid al fitr service on this Wednesday morning, an earlier session held here for those heading out to work early. Allah. After a month of fasting from dawn till dusk, this religious holiday meant to mark a return to happiness. We should not forget our brothers and sisters who may be suffering in the most difficult of the times in their lives, brothers and sisters. Allahu Akbar. 
This holiday traditionally a moment to count blessings. Living here in America, in Nassau County, we're blessed with so many blessings in our lives. Families and friends gathered for a day of joy and prayers. We're excited to celebrate Eid after fasting for the month of Ramadan. Um, so it's really nice to be with family, but our hearts are also with the people of Gaza who can't celebrate because of what's going on. Allah. Steve Langford for Newsday TV. Some Long Islanders are collecting solar eclipse glasses and sending them to kids in South America. That's because they'll be getting a full solar eclipse in October. A collection box was set up at Great Neck South right, High School and students down. spread the word about it on social media. There's also a collection box at the Harbor Fields Public Library, Huntington Community First Aid Squad and more. And the Back to Reggaeton Tour is coming to Elmont. Don Omar is playing at UBS Arena on September 15th. The tour celebrates the Puerto Rican superstars 25 years of absolute smashes. Tickets go on sale next Wednesday. And a Bayshore man is battling depression through art. It's a story you'll see only in Newsday. The utensil stuff, I had bought the machine that's over there. And then I was like, oh, well, I have, I have a case of silverware from before I moved in with uh, the person I was living with. So why don't, why don't I see what I can make out of these? It's like, oh, this kind of looks like a head for a spoon. And then I started slowly building some stuff. So this is one of the first pieces I did, maybe definitely with the first set of flatware I had. I was living in Richmond, Virginia for three years. For a few months, I had some like ideations of uh, taking my life, and then eventually, I I I tried to. The thing about uh, inpatient and like the psych ward, nobody's on their phone doing stuff. It's it's a weird kind of reset in a way. The art therapy that was what I got the most out of. The dance relates to the art. It gives me a lot of inspiration. Dance is always is about making shapes with your body, so those those shapes translate into into this medium surprisingly well. It brings me a lot of joy, so a lot of the more joyful pieces that I have tend to either feature dance or use dance elements in them. It keeps me sane, it keeps me active, keeps me social. This one's just a, uh, a mermaid that I decided I was gonna do one day. It's like, oh, I can make some scales. Oh, a mermaid would be cool. A lot of people, including myself, like to think of my work as whimsical. It's fun because you get to see people light up a little bit when they see what it is. I like getting that kind of reaction out of people, uh, especially when I tell them what it's made of. A lot of times people are like, oh, this is really cool. And then I say, oh yeah, it's made of spoons. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> I, went, I showed up at a party like this. <laughs> Even just a year ago, if you had if you had met me a year ago today, I was a much more miserable person. <laughs> the fact that I do get these large commissions and I'm getting a lot of positive feedback regularly, it's it's hard to listen to that that inner voice that puts me, that that puts me down. Between a year ago and today, I yeah, I it's, it's I'm a very I feel like a very different person. Now, to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, pull the Newsday TV video box. Now, tonight's Mets game has been postponed. Now, this is due to forecasted inclement weather in Atlanta. The game against the Braves will be made up in September. As of now, tomorrow's noon game is still on. And a costly loss to the Isles last night for the Rangers. Their biggest concern is now their number one center. Newsday's Colin Stevenson reports. The Rangers have three games remaining in the regular season after their 4-2 loss to the Islanders at UBS Arena. For this team that's qualified for the playoffs and, and been a playoff team since March 26th, just getting through the regular season is, is the challenge right now. Tonight, uh, the Rangers lost center Mika Zibanejad midway through the third period on a collision that either was or was not inadvertent, depending on who you ask. 
Zbanjad collided with Islanders defenseman Adam Pellick, and Rangers coach Peter Laviolette thought it was deliberate and vicious. The Islanders didn't see it that way. Either way, Zibanejad had to leave the game. He did return to the bench later, but did not get on the ice. And the question of whether he is good to go is the biggest question facing the Rangers right now. Zibanejad is their number one center. He does everything. He provides offense, he works on the power play, he works on the penalty kill, he checks opposing teams' first line centers. So they don't have anybody to replace him. And if he can't go, that's going to be a big problem for their playoff aspirations. And that is the predicament the Rangers find themselves in now, is as these last three games are being played, what if they have injuries to other key players? What if Arthur Henry Panarin gets hurt? Or if Igor Shesterkin gets hurt? So the question is, should they rest some of their starters now to avoid the risk of injuring them? They say that they aren't going to do that because they are trying for first overall, but when you look at Mika Zibanejad lying on the ice like that, and you don't know what his status is going to be, it's very tempting to figure you might want to sit some of these guys out. For Newsday TV, I'm Colin Stevenson. Now, to read more about the Rangers, go to Newsday.com, click Get More on the Newsday TV video box. Now let's take a look at your wet Long Island weather. Yes, I hate to tell you, but the dry times are pretty much over for the next couple of days. So tonight we're in the high 40s and tomorrow we will have some rain. So taking a closer look at tomorrow, you can see we have cloud cover and rain all day and the seven day forecast shows more rain on the way, but the weekend, at least as of now, well, most of it. Oh no, Sunday it's raining. Oh, it used to be dry, but that's not the case anymore. Long Island weather is brought to you by Fire Island Ferries. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.